Mrs. Lichter, would you conduct a roll call, please? Shannon Stebbins. Here. Lewis Worthy. Absent. Dave McNary. Absent. Steve Huff. Present. Brian Schultz. Present. Jeff Sayer. Here. Here. Bill Boyer, absent. Mr. Chairman, we have a quorum. Thank you. Next item is uh, approval of January 17th, 2018 meeting minutes. Those minutes are in front of you. Do we have any corrections or additions? Saying none, I request a motion for approval. So I move to Second. we approve. Second. Any opposed? And we'll go back to the call to the public now. We have an open call to, be, to the public at the beginning of the meeting to address any item not on the agenda. That call to the public is regulated by Arizona law. We are not allowed to take part and answer, uh, have a two-way discussion on anything that's not on the agenda, and it's limited to five minutes. Does anyone in the audience like to present anything to the board? Seeing none, we'll move on to the Communications announcements and airport supervisor's report, which is Steve Johnson's. All righty. Uh, I, I do apologize that we didn't get everything out to you earlier. Uh, you all have written uh, items there, but uh, it was a last minute uh, write a thon today. Uh, that all being said, um, the ADOT FOD pre bid meeting occurred yesterday. Uh, we had three contractors on site, uh, we toured the project. Uh, ADOT funding is available. The bid opening will occur at the end of this month. Uh, an addendum will be published shortly uh, with adjustments to the project. And uh, construction is estimated to start this spring as opposed to, I think, the last time I mentioned it this summer. The electrical vault uh, will be under construction again in mid-March. Uh, again, and this is um, very uh, liberal. We figure it'll be done in May. It'll be done sooner than that, but just covering our bases. The taxiway alpha crack ceiling is scheduled for the week of March 16th, tentatively right now. Um, the runway taxiway connectors application of rejuvenator is scheduled for April. Uh, again, we're working around all the special uses that have been going on at the airport. Uh, and once this, uh, both of these timelines solidify a little bit, we'll be sharing details with the airport businesses and the tenants so they know what's going on. Uh, and again, the premise here is to uh, have as little uh, impact on normal operations as possible. Um, we're moving forward on cleaning up the parking lot uh, in the central uh, parking area just to the south of the large Desert Skies hangars. Um, We'll be working with Desert Skies, um, given some complaints and some concerns, uh, to relocate truck deliveries through the air freight gate. Uh, because we've noticed that some of the truckers like to slalom through parked airplanes, and we don't want to have any issues with that. Um, and we are looking at uh, a replacement and relocation of the D2 gate. Um, it's done uh, stellar service for us, but uh, it's getting old and uh, it needs to be replaced. Phase one of the D2 hangar development is under construction. You've all seen the saw cutting out there. Pavement will start to be removed shortly. Uh, singer, <coughs> city hangar inspections have begun and are continuing. Um, we're moving forward towards replacing one of the airport locator signs on the access road. They're all quite faded, as you've all noticed. Uh, and again, uh, uh, just a reminder, we have a grant application in with the FAA. Um, we have about half the money to do that for the master plan. Uh, they are coordinating, rounding up the rest of the money for it from other airports that uh, don't spend their money. And again, uh, we're gonna be doing an economic benefit analysis, which again, won't be paid for by the federal government, but again, it's a key piece of this project. We anticipate a grant offer from FAA in either July or August of this year. The uh, RV group, uh, that's Home Built Airplanes, um, had a successful formation training clinic a couple weeks ago. 
uh, we believe they generated about $45,000 into the local economy. Uh, the RCAF uh, was on site for two weeks in February. They have returned. Uh, you've probably all heard and seen them. Um, and they'll be here for another two week uh, time frame and they go back to Canada. And then uh, recently on February 17th, we had uh, 17 military helicopters relocate here due to uh, high winds uh, for about two days out of their training area in California. I think it's Death Valley. Um, so needless to say, uh, the RCAF had their C-130 on the ramp. We had 17 helicopters on the ramp. Um, parking was at a premium uh, this weekend. Airport events, again, uh, the Royal Canadian Air Force, uh, February 17th through the 4th of March. Embry-Riddle flight training, uh, March 23rd and 25th. AOPA Rusty Pilot Seminar at the terminal on March 24th. Uh, EAA Young Eagles flights uh, on March 31st, uh, and then Hangar 24 is scheduled for their air fest on October 27th. Any questions? Yeah, back at the, uh, the FOD project, the addendum is going to get done and the, the contractor is doing that? Uh, yes, yeah, CNS, uh, our, our uh, consultant is doing the addendum. It should be done in the next couple of days. This was after CID said they couldn't do it, right? Um, there was confusion, I think, on CID's part as to it taking them a lot of time, and our consultant does all that. So it's as quick as them just doing something up and hitting a keystroke on a computer, and it's done. And to the initial construction of the uh, electric vault, did anybody from CID ever come out and look at any of that project since they were the project manager? No. That's always interesting. Uh, as far as the airport master plan goes, um, I, I know that uh, Cal is, is aware of the need to be able to present the city council with accurate economic impact from the airport, and that's part of this master plan. Uh, Brian sent me a, an email. Uh, we're not we're not alone in this endeavor. Chan the city of Chandler just had their master plan done, and they've got flyers now up on and around the airport with uh, the economic impact of the airport. So we aren't alone in in cities whose population doesn't understand what the impact is and how much of the economy of the city is generated by the airport. So I, I just reiterating once more how important it is to have that economic impact portion of that master plan completed. And, and um, given the unique nature of the airport here and its tie to tourism um, and economic development, what I'm going to be pressing uh, our master planning consultant for, given the fact that uh, the federal government no longer funds economic uh, development studies, is to go outside the box a little bit and uh, look at the events we have at the airport, like the Royal Canadian Air Force, the RVs, and other things, the surgeons that fly in and do procedures here and then go back to Phoenix or Las Vegas and try to tie that in because none of those items are traditional in this. Well, it's, it's very difficult to, to quantify. Um, Brian related an instance, uh, just a, for example, X family comes to, to the lake. They, they, are an air, they have several airplanes. They're well-to-do. And because we have a good airport, they end up buying a multi-million dollar house. They buy, they, they bought several vehicles here. And, and now, because of the airport and making it accessible to them, they are a part-time resident of Lake Havasu. And, and that list goes on and on. That's not an isolated case. Uh, one other, a couple of more comments. Um, on airport events, there'll be an airport uh, barbecue on Sunday, the 25th, at the at the uh, terminal, sponsored by EAA. It is uh, to introduce the Canadians to all of our local pilots, and we'd like to invite any and everyone to attend. It's going to be pulled pork sandwiches and other things <laughs> at noon. And, and that is the 25th this weekend. This coming Sunday. So please put it on your calendars. Anybody else have any comments or questions on the airport supervisor report, Brian? Uh, 
The only question I have is um, on the alpha crack ceiling, it has a, the week of March 16th. The 16th is a Friday, so I was just, is it ending on the 16th or is it starting on that following Monday? Not trying to be completely nitpicky. We like nitpicking. Um, if I recall correctly, that's the beginning. Uh, and at least from what I've heard at this point, we're anticipating maybe three days and some of the work will be done uh, early in the morning, uh, say four to six uh, in areas where we have the largest cracks, which tend to be on the north end of the airport. Thank you. Anyone else? We'll move on to the next item, which is our first public hearing. It's a review and discussion of policies regarding large vehicle parking on the airport. And I'll again ask Steve to provide the introduction to this. Okay, at our last uh, advisory meeting, um, we formed a committee, uh, um, and that was the chair and one of our members and myself. Uh, we met this Monday um, and went through the uh, airport operating ordinance, uh, which covers a lot of this. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll highlight the areas, because there are not many of them here, that uh, talked to uh, vehicle parking on the airport. Um, the authority uh, has been delegated to the airport manager uh, to regulate any class or type of vehicle that operates on the airside portion of the airport. And again, that's what we're speaking to here, anything that's inside the fence. Um, the airport manager can have any vehicle removed from the airport which is disabled, abandoned, poses an operational issue, or is parked in violation of the airport uh, operating regulations. Uh, and then specifically, motorhomes, recreational vehicles, uh, and here's where I went on to Wikipedia uh, this morning and got a whole slew of definitions. So being literal here, but bear with me. Um, travel trailers, camping trailers, fifth wheels, pop-up trailers, toy haulers, sliding campers, caravans, motor coaches, um, and then boats as well shall not be stored on the airport unless with a city-approved lease and written consent of the airport manager. Uh, needless to say that, that uh, um, some of these uh, vehicles are on site uh, and there is no written permission for them at this point. So that all being said, uh, the committee's recommendation uh, was that these policies continue. A and then uh, the other piece of this is having started the uh, um, hangar inspections. Although the placement of a small boat in a hangar can occur, with written approval from the airport management. And again, we have some folks that have a boat incidental to the airplane. So the main purpose of the hangar is an airplane. Off to the side or in the back, you've got a boat. Um, as long as we're complying with the FAA uh, hangar regulations, which uh, equate to what I just said, uh, it was the committee's suggestion um, that you know a boat along with an airplane or a couple boats along with an airplane, incidental use not an issue, but as far as mobile homes, recreational vehicles, or heavy vehicles, uh, and when I say that, I mean like a, a semi or something like that, because we had one parked up there at the airport for a while, that those not be parked out at the airport. This is a public hearing, as you want to hear, that would like to make a comment. Seeing none, uh, I have a couple of comments. Um, one of the things that it says here is the committee's recommendation that these policies continue. These aren't policies. They're like Havasu City ordinances. These are all codified within the ordinances of Lake Havasu. Uh, it was the committee's recommendation that anything that's stored in a hangar that's not an airplane be done so with written permission from the airport supervisor. That's to protect both the user and the city so that it's in writing. So if someone wants to s store a small boat, they need to apply to the airport supervisor with a letter requesting to do so, and then he can give them permission. Obviously, we have several motorhomes, fifth wheels, and other types of things that are stored on the airplane, uh, airport, and that Lake Havasu ordinances do not allow that. So the real purpose of this, I think, was, to, was twofold. One, to review them and make sure we understood what the ordinances were, and to use this form as a public process to let the public know, once again, what these ordinances are, and to get the word out to everyone so there's not a surprise. Any other comments from anyone else on the board?
Seeing none, we'll continue to the next item, was update and discussion regarding the North Ramp bathroom. And once again, I'll ask Steve to uh, introduce this. Okay, again, uh, at our last meeting in January, um, there was a suggestion made by the public, uh, the possibility of construction installation of a restroom facility on a portion of the North Ramp, uh, which is a bit of a distance from our, our current existing uh, restroom facility that we have uh, on the southern part of the central hangar area. Uh, some quick contacts with our consultant engineer that actually uh, is, I believe, doing a, a from scratch built restroom at Baghdad. Um, the initial numbers they came up with, um, and again, this would be following government, governmental process and procurement and permits and all that other good stuff that we do was anywhere from 140 to eighty thousand dollars yeah I mean it's it's mind-boggling but again when you start getting into all the codes and everything um, there's a reason for it uh, we haven't done any in-depth engineering on it at this point uh, we also uh, got an estimate for a temporary uh, porta potty uh, up in that area that would be serviced once a week um, and that's about $70 a month or $840, uh, $840 per year. Um, in addition, um, given concerns that were voiced by this board um, in regards to um, maintenance at the airport and past city-funded or airport-funded projects out there, uh, just a review of other things we have going on this year, 2017-18, pavement rejuvenation uh, of the runway connectors Alpha 2 through Alpha 6, which I mentioned earlier, crack seal of uh, the entire length of taxiway Alpha, um, pavement seal on the north ramp taxi lane, the, the north ramp hangars that be on the east side. Uh, it should be, uh, the, 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 tax, the, the seal should be done prior to the end of this fiscal year, so the focus is in the next few months. Uh, and then the projects for spring of 2018. Now, you all haven't seen this before, uh, but I came up with this list based on your concerns for next fiscal year. So this would be 2018, 2019. Uh, repaint the uh, edge lines on Taxiway Alpha. Remove the city underground fuel storage tanks we have out there because they're way beyond their design life. Uh, and I believe there are new requirements that we haven't even looked into to get them back up to speed. Update the airport stormwater po pollution prevention plan. Try to say that quickly. Uh, repaint part of the main ramp center lines. Uh, replace one gate, which I mentioned a, a minute ago. Repaint 25 tie downs out on the main ramp and replace the airport locator signs. Uh, we have requested those projects as part of the city budget process that we're starting to uh, uh, get into. Uh, and again, Given your concern on deferred maintenance in the past, um, staff would say that the uh, uh, a new build uh, restroom at the north ramp, this might not be the time for it. Uh, and maybe the rental of a porta potty up there for now is the way to approach it. In addition, um, the other thing I think I've mentioned in the past, but this is a good time to mention it as well, is. Um, we do have a property evaluation and a survey map on the north ramp. Now again, it's dated probably about three or four years old. We could do an RFP to see if anybody wants to do additional hangers up there. And if that's the case, maybe that's where we put it on whoever is going to build the hangers to build a restroom that's public. This is a public hearing. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to make a comment? Uh, seeing none, uh, from my perspective, um, well, the pavement seal w was brought up as a public concern by Tom Stokely, and we have committed to him to get that done, so I want to make sure we follow through with that. Uh, in addition, that's not mentioned here was the termite problem on those hangars, and I, th I think you have a completion date in mind. We're waiting on the tenants to get some things done. Is that correct? That is correct. So that's two items that have been brought up by the public that, that I think staff's done a really fine job in responding to. And as far as the underground fuel storage tanks, 
we either do this now or we do it later when we're forced to do it. So it's it's better to get it budgeted now and get those things up and gone. Underground fuel storage is is a it's just a, a problem when it comes to environmental concerns, and ours are old. And uh, I'm sure that everyone agrees with you; they just need to go away. Any other comments? Go ahead. The potential chance of uh, putting more hangars up towards that north end and opening that up, what's the process to do that? I would think while the economy is strong and people are flying and money's flowing, now would be a great time to open that up. We would put a proposal together, uh, advertise it. Um, I would suggest not only the local paper, but probably the uh, Arizona Business Journal, uh, which gives you a broader scope. Um, leave it open for a month and then get some proposals and see where we're going to go. And again, the premise here is aircraft storage hangars. We're not talking about an FBO. Uh, another aviation business would be fine, but again, uh, at least from my standpoint, I'm open for as long as it's an aviation use, I'm open for anything that might come. Now, and this is, these are not hangars that would be owned or funded by the city. This would be. And it's open right now. It's part of the master plan. So anyone that wants to do that, we could start it immediately, get an RFP put together. So if there's any investor out there that wants to build some hangars at the airport, then it's already it's already part of the master plan zoning, I believe. And it's just a matter of putting the RFP together and making it public, which is not a small matter, but that's what it takes. I would think with the response that D2 had that you would think there'd be some contractors that would be interested. I'm hearing that at 17 cents a square foot, we may be a little bit expensive. We may have to relook at that and get a new cost estimate uh, for the for the dirt lease. But uh, I, what I'm hearing is that 17 cents is, is very hard to make a return on investment with that type of square foot. Yeah, the RFP would give us a sense of because um, we'll get comments back uh, of what the reality is at this point, um, which. You know, you don't know until you actually publish something and, and see what sort of response we get. Uh, from my standpoint, uh, I know that there's two people here that have a hangar on the north ramp. Uh, I'd like to ask you directly, would a porta potty serve as an interim solution? Uh, it's my feeling that uh, if you have the ability to do that, that we should go ahead and do it. If you need us, uh, I'll make a proposal right now and vote on the board if you want that backing. But that sounds like a great idea to me. A vote would be nice, and the other thing we'll do, uh, depending on where we locate it, we'll put some rebar down so that when we have a windstorm, it won't go down the hill. <laughs> Can I solicit a proposal for uh, a motion? Mr. Chairman, so moved. Have a second. Um, I'll second that. So the motion would be to have staff place a porta potty on a yearly lease on the north ramp until such time that we can erect a permanent bathroom facility. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Are there any, is there any other discussion on anything that has to do with uh, any of these projects or the, uh, the bathroom facility on the north ramp? Uh, future agenda items, I believe, is the, the next thing. Brian, you have anything? I'm just curious where we stand on timeline for that uh, analysis on the ground lease and the uh, other hangar leases that the city was going to look into instead of just going to a straight flat line of actually evaluating towards other airports. That'll be one of our next projects. I think we can't at least said staff was going to do it and the, the reality is that Steve will do it but uh, I, I have we I can have certainly volunteer to help yes. you. <laughs> I mean I'm, I'm willing to help anyway because originally it sounded more I thought the accounting department was going to help you do it so that's why I was asking. No, actually, uh, I've, I've always been the selected one, so. We'll, we'll get together with you. and So let's uh, have for a future agenda item a select all them, a, uh, for lack of anything better at this point, a report on where we stand on the uh, rate. Uh, I don't remember the exact terminology that we use, but it's the hangar rate determination comparison for next month. Anyone else have anything for the future agenda now? If something comes up uh, <clears throat> between now and our next meeting, just send me an email and we'll get, get it taken care of and get it put on the agenda. Uh, the next meeting is uh, Wednesday, March 21st, 2018. And once again, if 
you're available on Sunday, please uh, come by the airport at noon and help us uh, treat the Canadian pilots to a southern pulled pork barbecue at the airport. We'd love to have you. Um, request a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn. I have a second. I second. Without objection, we're adjourned.